Hi there, I hope you're well. Uh, so can you really buy a Mercadiros equivalent for just $135? Well, of course you can't, but when a subscriber told me about this, the hivest hivest, I don't even know how to say it, at that price, I had to buy one just to see what it was like. Remember, I do the silly things so that you don't have to. So way back in June, I thereabouts, I did a video about the Mercadiros sander. It's kind of a unique tool, has a special place in my heart and in the workshop uh, for me because it's one of the few a uh, few tools, maybe the only tool, certainly the only sander that I've actually purchased and returned. It just didn't work for me for reasons that were entirely my own. And if you want to know the gory details, then uh, go and check out that video. There's a link down below. Uh, fast, that was many years ago. Fast forward to this year, uh, my friend Leo over on the Handicraft channel, Leo's a one-handed woodworker. If you don't know his channel, go and check him out. He did a video about why he was parting company with his Mercadiros. Uh, he's moved on to the festival for reasons of his own. Again, I'll pop uh, a link to that video down below. Uh, but Leo was generous enough to let me borrow his Mercadiros, his recently repaired Mercadiros, for a few weeks. And having used it for a little while, I've got to say, I, I really liked it. Uh, not enough to spend £400 or thereabouts on actually buying one, but it really scratched an itch for me. Uh, and that itch is, in particular, a 5-inch, 125mm sander with a 5mm stroke. Most small sanders like this Festool ETS-125, when the pad size comes down, the stroke size comes down as well. So they are very much a finishing sander. I think this is either 2 or 2.5mm two stroke, so not very aggressive. Um, when I did my sanders video, uh, the sander that I suggested that everybody starts with is a 6-inch, 150mm random orbital with as big a stroke as possible. So a 5mm stroke is one of the most useful sanders you can start with, and it remains one of my go-to sanders here in the workshop. If you add the option of a 5-inch pad onto that, and it massively increases the range of tasks you can take on. So back to present day now, I paid $135 uh, at AliExpress plus a whopping $55 shipping, so about 190 bucks, 150 quid in all for this hives. De I don't even know if it's a model number on it. It's just a uh, six inch, 150 mil, five mil stroke brushless sander. Uh, all in all, the shipping actually took forever, about seven weeks, literally a slow boat from China, uh, and not so much, you know, $55 shipping, shipping and handling, more like bed and board, I think, but it has arrived. Uh, uh, let's take a quick look and see what you get in the box. It's a very plain box. There's absolutely nothing fancy in this, but there is everything that you need. Basically, you have a sander on its own. You've got a collection of hose connectors and adapters. Uh, what else? We've got a uh, spanner. Book of words. Uh, you have an impressive array of uh, range of sandpapers. That's uh, really useful. First of all, please take note. Uh, you get, slightly bizarrely, a uh, wooden handled paintbrush, which I think is to clean it with. And you get, oh yeah, uh, it does actually come with a Euro plug. Uh, so it needs to be cut off and a proper British plug put on. But otherwise, that's pretty much your lot. So build quality is a little bit on the plasticky side, as you'd expect for a budget tool like this. And even though it's 100 quid, it is a, a budget tool. And as always with budget tools, you do get a ridiculously short two meters of mains cable. This is my personal bugbear, it drives me nuts. Um, I mentioned before about having to change the plug over, that's one thing. But only putting two meters of cable on there just drives me crazy because you've got to do something else with it, having a, a normal extension just isn't going to work, so you've now got to get inside the, the guts of it and change that cable over or rig up some other sort of, you know, uh, pigtail uh, festival connector or whatever it is. Uh, it, it is. It does annoy me. I wish, I, I don't know what they pay f for a meter of cable. You know, charge me another five dollars and give me a couple of meters spare. If you don't need it, you can always cut it down much more easily. You can add one in. But anyway, that's just my personal hate. Uh, controls are very familiar to anybody who's used the Deros. There's the flappy paddle on the top uh, to switch it on and off. More on that in a minute. Uh, there's a on-off switch at the back, which uh, cuts the power completely. Remember to switch that off before changing abrasives. Uh, and the speed control on either side, which you can use whilst the machine is running. Uh, the numbers go from four to nine and correspond roughly to the 1,000 RPM that you've got it running at. So it starts at 4,000 RPM. 
It is a 350 watt brushless motor, they say, and runs to 10,000 RPM maximum speed where you get a little A in the indicator there. That's fast. I uh, don't know if you need one, anything that fast, but it is. Uh, there's a sticker on the base that claims to be ROHS and CE compliant. Those are EU directives. Um, it's what they claim. Who are we to uh, to question that? The dust extraction hose connector on the back here. Uh, as I said, in the box you get a couple of adapters for this. You do get a shortish meter just over uh, a length of I think it's 22 mil hose and a little adapter that'll plug into that. And the other end of that will uh, take a standard uh, whatever it is, 32 mil connector on the inside. So that works fine. Uh, if you're really keen, you can actually just about squeeze this adapter onto the 22 mil Merker hose uh, and use that that way. Or it actually fits the standard Festool oops, D27 hose, which will go over the outside and fits fine. And that's what I'm actually going to use uh, while I'm using the sander today. And so far, so familiar. And um, this is where we start to differ a little bit with the controls. On the Merca, the flappy paddle is actually a variable speed. You can set the speed on the switches, set the maximum speed, and then use the paddle to vary up to that speed as a maximum. On this sander, the uh, flappy paddle is just an actuator, it's just a switch, and you set the actual speed on the control here. So there's no actual variable speed on the paddle. Now that didn't bother me particularly. Um, I found I didn't use the Duros for very long, but I found it quite finicky, very difficult to to get that touch obviously if you're using it all day long then I'm sure you'll get the get the feel for it but I, I didn't so that doesn't bother me particularly but it is something that's that's different about this and uh, it is much simpler in those terms hopefully that'll mean that the speed controller will last a bit longer but uh, we'll see So is it any good? Uh, actually, it's pretty great. It is so quiet. I had a pal of mine round uh, last week. Hi, Michael. Uh, he popped in, socially distanced, of course, and he couldn't believe how quiet it was. Um, normally, when I run a sander during a piece of camera like this, I have to duck the audio down or record them separately. That is so quiet. That's 7,000 RPM. And obviously, it's noisier than at the minimum, but it's perfectly usable and so smooth as well. Even with the extractor on, it's impressive. Dust collection seems to be excellent, certainly up there with the festival sanders of mine. And it's light and it's quiet and it's easy to use one-handed. The best thing for me though, is that you can change the pads. Um, you can take a standard Merca style five inch pad. I bought this third party one off eBay and I can fit that onto this sander, so I will get my 5-inch sander with a 5 mil stroke. Let's swap them over now. So all in all, I am pretty happy with this. Uh, as I say, it ticks a lot of the boxes for me at a price that I'm prepared to pay. Uh, am I recommending it? No, 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 absolutely not. Look, if you buy a Merca or a Festool or a Bosch or a Metabo or a whatever and it goes wrong, then you send it back to the store that you got it from or you send it to their repair center and depending on how good they are, 
he'll get it back in a few days or a few weeks or whatever, but it's repaired under warranty. Uh, I'm assuming that repair and warranty issues with something like this will be absolutely non-existent. It took them seven weeks to get me a brand new tool uh, to me from China. So the chances of getting it repaired, I would imagine uh, is going to be impossible. It's a shot in the dark, a real punt. It scratches an itch for me, a five mil stroke in a five inch sander. And as I said earlier, I do the silly things so that you don't have to, unless you happen to have 150 notes sloshing around looking for a home, then by all means, join me on this adventure, but not if it's a tool that you're going to be relying on. A six inch random orbital is my go-to sander and has been for a long time. Well, instead, I'm going to be using this one instead. I'm going to be using the heck out of this over the coming months and see how it holds up. If it performs well, I'll tell you about it. If it breaks, I'll tell you about that too. And if it breaks and I manage to get it repaired, then I'll be shouting about it from the rooftops. But that's kind of it for now. Thanks for watching. As always, thanks so much to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members for their ongoing support. And while my member credits roll, let me just tell you quickly about the abrasives that I've been using here today. Uh, these are fairly new from Trend. Trend have supplied these for review but I have not been paid to use them or say nice things about them. They're available in all the usual sizes and three distinct types. There's an aluminium oxide abrasive, which is where the abrasive is spread out a little to prevent clogging. Great for sanding fillers and getting the best dust collection. There's a zirconium abrasive, which lasts well and tends not to wear as it ages. Sometimes I'm sure you know you can start with a P80 and after a while it's more like a P120. Well, with the zirconium, it keeps its edge for longer. Uh, and finally, there's a mesh abrasive, so maximum dust collection and compatibility. And the mesh can actually be washed up to five times to really clear it out. I think they mean run it under a tap rather than a 30 degree wash and a short spin. One thing I really do like across the range is that they are all immensely tough. I don't know about you, but I lose more sanding discs because the edges tear than I do from general wear. And these have all a very solid backing, almost impossible to tear with your bare hands with great hook and loop that sticks well to all the sanders I have, including Festool, without any need for interface pads. So if you're after a tough abrasive that works well across a wide range of sanders, then give them a try. It's available in all the usual places, and I've left some links down below as well, of course. Uh, that's it for this week, though. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.